Hey everyone, Michael Short here. Come on, let's go outdoors. Well, welcome to the Lesser Slave Watershed, an incredible and vital part of Alberta's natural areas. The Lesser Slave Watershed Council has been leading efforts to enhance and protect wetlands and riparian areas across the Lesser Slave region. This has been accomplished through their Watershed Resiliency Program. In our watershed, which encompasses all the rivers that flow into Lesser Slave Lake, our lake is at the center, or you could say the heart of the watershed, and we have a number of tributaries flowing from the Swan Hills and north from the Peavine area that feed into Lesser Slave Lake. And so what happens on the landscape really does have an impact directly on Lesser Slave Lake. So stewarding the landscape helps maintain lake health over time by reducing sediment transport, filtering and trapping pollutants and runoff, um, keeping stream temperatures cooler for fish. You could say Lesser Slave Lake is the heart. The tributaries and streams that feed into it are the veins and arteries, and the wetlands and riparian areas function as the kidneys that filter the water prior to it entering these streams and eventually the lake. A healthy and resilient watershed provides numerous ecological benefits, including reducing the impacts of floods, droughts, and wildfires. To date, 23 projects have been completed to conserve or enhance 819 acres of wetlands and riparian areas. It, it, all it takes is a little bit of impact on that landscape and you can see the difference in it, right? And as soon as you can start protecting a little bit of that, and I shouldn't say completely protecting, you you're, want to work with the ecosystem. And we're not trying to say that we can't ever go near the waterways ever again. We have to be realistic with it, right? That's not the, that's not the idea for, for this. We want to work with the ecosystem, not against it, right? The Lesser Slave Watershed Council collaborates with landowners providing access to grants and additional support for environmental planning. Definitely, overall, that's, that's their main objective, obviously. But on, on my level, it's made a, a very big difference to our operation. We're more, more productive uh, and we've solved issues that we didn't have the resources to solve on our own. Money being one of them, but definitely uh, knowing who to talk to and what questions to ask as well. Like, we're not experts in that. Yeah, so in our watershed, there's a lot of crown land, which is managed by the province, and then we have a lot of agricultural producers. And um, per person, I'd say our egg, egg producers own and manage large parcels of land. So it's in their interest to maintain and manage their farms in a, in a manner that's going to you know, carry on farm legacy. You need to keep healthy ecosystems, healthy pastures, so that your land is productive and can support your operation. And our agricultural producers are very keen to take on projects that benefit them, them and also the environment. Big Lakes County is responsible for ensuring compliance with agricultural guidelines and acknowledges the benefits of collaborating with the Watershed Council to assist agricultural producers. And that, that's been one of the lovely parts is we can go on now and say, hey, we recognize maybe you have some issues with your pasture. And I can tell that based on the kind of weed presence you have. But hey, let's talk about some opportunities with uh, federal provincial grant funding right now. And oh, that's gonna need an environmental farm plan. Well, you should go chat with Megan because she can help you with those resources. And, but hey, do you want a couple dollars for that set aside so that your, your cattle aren't grazing right into that wetland and we can talk about a, an off-site waterer or um, uh, a stream crossing and it's, it's nice that I come in with the bad news but I can also say hey we've got more than just bad news we've got some solutions and we've got some of those in our pocket but it's been nice to have Megan and her resources be um, another great local tool for us. So far, over $700,000 has been invested with ranchers who have implemented innovative methods to protect wetlands and riparian areas. What you see behind us is, that is a cap solar water. It is a gravity fed system. It comes out of a, like a 10 acre spring fed lake, probably, I think that lake is almost a half a mile from here. It just comes down here like it's a gravity feed system. The panels here, we use this system for 
four different fields, so we just come here and change the panels depending on what where the cattle are. To safeguard the water source, a significant fencing project was undertaken to keep cattle away from the lake. Well, it keeps that water source fresh, right? And to protect the water source, you have to protect the environment here. We also don't want those cattle, like, like the cattle, we can't make any money if they're going out there either, right? Like that's, we can't, we can't use this in the winter time if they can access that lake because they'll go out on the ice. Having, having water fresh and that, like the trees around it and all those things like it needs to be. Plus it's nice, like we have kids and grandkids and all those kinds of things, right? So we want to make sure that there's something here for them too. Landowners who demonstrate projects that directly benefit the watershed will find eager partners ready to collaborate. Organizations like us can support producers in um, talking about their idea, like what are the management challenges you're seeing? Like if your water quality is declining over time and you think it's you know, due to unrestricted livestock access, well, we could talk about you know, where's the best place to put your riparian fence, how should we revegetate this, what type of watering system would be a good solution here, if there's power or not, if we need a well. Running an agricultural operation is expensive and time consuming, and this stuff, it's important as well, but you know, feed and fuel costs and things kind of have to come first. So for us to be able to come in with some support really, I think, gets things off the ground. Very happy, they're very easy to talk to, they are quick to understand the issues and help us deal with them. Uh, it, it couldn't be a better relationship, I don't feel. They're, they're very, very effective at what they do. I had completed a far, an environmental farm plan a long time ago. But of course it was outdated and now everything's changed so I didn't know how to get back in and update everything and they were able to help with that too. So yes, they've been extremely helpful. The environmental improvements made by producers can contribute to an enhancement of the habitat within the broader watershed landscape. Well, and then like I said, it helps, it helps the environment. Like this is probably about 40 acres fenced out here. But I don't want, you know, half a million dollars worth of cows walking out on that ice either. You know, so that, like, the, it just makes sense, right? And, and to keep the water clean, like that's, that's like things like the fish in the lake, like the lesser slave lake. Like, most of us don't appreciate what those fish are worth out there. They're eventually gonna be gone out there because of the way we're fishing and the way we're doing all those things. And then we'll understand just how valuable they actually were to this community and the whole economic thing around here, right? Yeah, if you wanna be able to take your grandkids out there 30 years from now and catch, have them catch a fish, we need to start thinking that way right now. From its modest beginnings in 2015 with this program, the Lesser Slave Watershed Council has collaborated with numerous agricultural producers countywide, instilling optimism for the improvement of the watershed's health. You start to see a lot of the benefit of uh, wetland restoration and riparian areas. When you take a year like last year, we had one of the hottest years, springs that we've had in, well, I think recorded history, and we had one of the worst wildfire seasons in Alberta in recorded history. Right behind me, not a mile, is where that fire came to. A lot of people realize how, how precious that water is and how, how can we protect that and work with it. We're not saying, we, we can't just walk away and say we're not gonna do anything anywhere near it. Let's work with it, let's try to find ways. And that's, that's optimistic, so yeah, the future looks good.